Welcome to the Sacred and the Profane podcast. I'm your host, Shannon McNally. We will be speaking with elders, musical luminaries, medicine people, and session players about everyday magic and the past, present, and future of heartfelt and soulful real music. Hello, this is Shannon McNally, and I have the great pleasure of sitting with Jesse Coulter today. And I'm with you. Yes, hello. <laughs> I'm so excited. And um, we had the great pleasure of meeting today, but we've been chatting on the phone for months and months. Um, we're talking about uh, Waylon Jennings and herself and music, artistry, and all kinds of good stuff. So I guess we should start with uh, yourself. <laughs> <laughs> With myself. <laughs> With yourself. Uh, you're from Arizona originally. And, I mean, I know that the people, you know, your story is wonderful. Um, but you're from Arizona originally, and you're one of the original. You were like, you're sort of the, 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 the original uh, lady outlaw, lady uh, country singers that really transcends um, to, to today is still informing so much of what uh, gals are doing today. Mm -hmm. uh, I know particularly here in Nashville too, and there's so many things that we emulate and love about you. Oh, this um, is hard for me to relate to. But well, thank you. Well, thank you. Yes. yes. Um, so mm -hmm. I've heard you describe yourself as a reluctant artist, mm -hmm. um, and of course you were married for many years to Waylon Jennings, mm -hmm. who. Um, was sort of larger than life. So um, that's, I wanted to maybe start there with that interesting dichotomy. Okay. And uh, <laughs> yeah, so what, what is a reluctant artist? Well, I think you're either primarily a writer or a performer. Of course, you can be both. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you usually enjoy one more than the other, I think. And I was more... I think my joy was so full as I wrote and expressed. Mm -hmm. And I loved singing them. It was truly wonderful, especially with Waylon, you know, um, involved, either to produce, like he and Chet Atkins produced my first album, which is still on Sony. Uh -huh. uh, and um, A Country Star is Born is what they named it, which uh -huh. was funny because... Uh, actually, my success was more in pop to begin with. Mm -hmm. um, I tell the story to the young kids that I was the first uh, girl painted on a whiskey go-go wall. That was part of their advertisement in those days. Oh. So in my things, uh, crossed over, they, they weren't in country, they were in pop. Mm -hmm. And then later on, when Waylon and I did the, um, um, the Outlaw album, um, then I was more accepted in the country field, uh -huh. you know, which was great. They're very loyal fans. Mm -hmm. They're less fickle uh -huh. and as a group. And in mm -hmm. those days, we were there, I was there at a sentinel time in American history. It was small. The pool was small. Right. And the hardworking country people, uh, they had great voices. Mm -hmm. And... They worked all the time. The rock and pop people worked their albums, and that was it. Mm -hmm. But we, you know, it's it's odd that in a way we were part of the first, what they call today, branding. We weren't interested in the branding. Right. That was something that happened uh, really apart from us. Mm -hmm. um, but it worked. It worked. It was good for that time because there had been such an old guard of music here. Right. And done in a certain way. And Wayne was just probably the most creative person I ever knew mm -hmm. in all his ways. And uh, I think if he'd want to be remembered for anything, it would be that. And when he would, when he'd record a record, he would do it with the fervor and the passion of a single. Right. And that's what caused all the musicians to just raise up, you know, when they were working with him. Uh huh. Because his uh, steel, his steel devotion to music was great. Oh, I like that. It was yeah. just great. Yeah. yeah. 
So we were part of a time that was all unexpected. Right. The awards, the names, all that was not, had nothing to do with what we were doing. Waylon was just asking, can I just exercise my creativity? Right. Yeah. And not follow. He had followed. He had been over backwards. Right. He had recorded some great things with uh, Herb Alpert mm -hmm. and offered part of the company. And mm -hmm. he wanted Chet Atkins. Mm -hmm. He wanted, because that's what he grew up admiring, mm -hmm. you know. Right. But it almost killed him to come We're, to Nashville. He almost starved to death here. Right. Well, we all do a certain amount of imitation in the beginning. You're right. When we're learning. That's right. just how humans become, you right. know, for the most part, how humans do it. And then we hit this point where you just can't keep it in. You got the boogie-woogie in you, and you yeah. got to let it out, <laughs> as they say. <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, so you mentioned branding, which is mm -hmm. a really, I mean, if you're an artist today, it's like, it's all you hear. It's yeah. a word that you hear all day, every day. And then, you know, which is really interesting, but you, you put all these... And so, so much time is put t towards that mm -hmm. and defining that mm -hmm. and explaining that. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, am I an artist or am I a box of cereal? You know, am I Wheaties? You know, mm -hmm. but so without going off on that sort of rabbit hole, that you guys were all branded outlaws. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if you would tell me what that, beyond the branding, like how did that, where did that name come from? And why did, what was it that was embraceable by the artists that were it? Because it had to stick for a reason. You know, nicknames stick because of something. Well, Waylon stayed here. Everybody else left. Waylon stayed uh -huh. and fought. And what he did, it wasn't fighting anything violent. He just continued to do his music, to take off the studio musicians and using his road musicians, which was not allowed at mm -hmm. that point, and cutting songs that he felt strong about. He would certainly try to please the label mm -hmm. somewhat. Right. But by this time, he had been through probably, what, 25 years? Close to 30 years of trying to do what he was asked to do the best he could. Right. I mean, Herb Alpert heard him singing, you know, the twelfth of never, and if he can do that, you know, but and working the clubs, you know, mm -hmm. twelve hours a day and all that, he had been through all that. He was tired, mm -hmm. and he, he just needed to try to express what he felt, and he did. So it it broke it broke the the habit uh, mm -hmm. and the strength of what was going on here because it was all company mm -hmm. and you're either a company man or you're not and right. those that become the company people often will make it okay right, right. they do everything they're supposed to do right uh, but Waylon at that point um, had to had to get into recording himself and Tom Paul had been working to make this new kind of studio and to go to your own studio to work with other people, things that you all do today that never That happened, we take for granted. Never happened. Right. I mean, to record with an artist without going to the label. And I, I heard a recording of Buddy Holly in Buddy Holly's house at in Lubbock where he was trying to get back his tracks. Buddy Holly, who Waylon starred in very early on, right. they were friends. Right. And when, when Buddy, right, right before. Yeah. And Buddy was trying to get back tracks. He'd gone to another record label. These things were just... So the first people who break the sound barrier ah. are the ones that you see. And I, I, I wish the Dixie Chicks had looked at Waylon's case. They would have never gone through what they did. Mm -hmm. uh, but he began recording his own things because the producers were adding things to his records. And he mm -hmm. fought for Willie Nelson's Redheaded Stranger. says, don't you dare... Do, I love that yeah. story too. Yeah. I love that story. Yeah. He fought. He was a. He was his brother's keeper. Not uh -huh. the rest of them. There were a lot of them that weren't. But Waylon protected his his brother's back. So that character was in him. He had character. Yeah. And of course, the kids remember 
you know, the days that maybe he lost sleep for uh-huh. years, which I think that contributed to his early death. I do. Right. I think loss of sleep in the early years, you know. <laughs> but sleep is he critical. He just didn't want to go to sleep. I mean, and it, would, it was so funny. We'd drive around 18th, 17th Avenue South. Everybody was just driving around all night, you mm-hmm. know, and he was playing pinballs and, uh, you know, just things to stay up. And, but music, they were smelling, listening. We'd gather at a, gather at somebody's house, a uh, Sue Brewer, who just would listen to these songs, mm-hmm. Roger Miller, all of them. It was a small um, breakthrough, you know, right. to, to much bigger things. Right. Well, yeah, yeah and, but it, to much bigger things yeah. for a lot of people. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he sort of he stuck, his, yeah. stuck his finger in the thing. It's yeah. like, in the dam. Yeah. yeah, and that's all, that's, I mean, and that's, mm-hmm. that's part of that legacy that that's why, that's why people are still, still so drawn to it. Yeah. Um, so this record that I just made this, I just made a record sort of on a whim um, of all Whalen's songs um, without really knowing why beyond that little gut feeling of, I love this stuff. This guy is so cool. I would kind of like to be like that. How can I be like that? He's, he's this guy, you know, very guy, very man. Mm-hmm. And I'm you know, very girl. I'm very girl. <laughs> so how do I, how do I do this? Well, maybe I'll do this. If it doesn't go well, I won't tell anybody I tried, uh, but, <laughs> but we managed to get through it and it came out all right. And, um, but so I've, you know, in, in getting some feedback, uh, you know, what did you think? What did you think of that? What did that make sense to you? What, what do you think he would have thought of that? Oh, I, I'm, I sparked to it because I thought this is such an original, cool idea. And I wondered, yeah, I wondered because it is so male, but what what makes it incredible is that you're a great storyteller. And not every vocalist has that ability uh, to tell a story. Mm-hmm. And you know, the stories being told, even in the Indian nations, yeah. nothing's done. They have the greatest internet of anybody I've ever seen. It's all Verbal. vocal, yeah. passing it down. Through song, too, <laughs> right? Yeah, they yeah. sing a lot of songs. Oh, yes, Native yes, yes yeah. absolutely. But you were able, I thought, how's she going to do this? And so <laughs> then when you would send me something, I said, i got to hear it, got to hear it. And you were just starting it. And <clears throat> as I listened, I thought, she's got that thing that a true storyteller has to have. They have the passion of understanding, but they're a little detached. And Waylon had that because he was a true born performer and really had, had, had written earlier. Then he laid down writing and mm-hmm. then he began writing shortly after we were together, which was awesome. And he had no confidence in his own writing, but the performing, the interpreting, and he's known as a great interpreter. Yeah. Great interpreter. Yeah. And that's what you did. All right. And you interpreted his songs in a way that those words are going to stay alive. Right. You, you, And that's not easy. I mean, you know, because he burst it. Yeah. But you told it. And I think he would flip because he loved the contrast. Mm-hmm. He loved the contrast of things. And I think, and the music is alive. Uh, it's very alive. Well, I owe that to yeah. the band. They, they were fantastic. Very but yeah, alive. I'm so glad to hear you say that because <laughs> yeah. that's really all I wanted to do. That's what I wanted to do. And I thought, when I listen to the modern landscape, of music, and I hear a lot of company. I still hear a lot mm-hmm. of the company. Mm-hmm. And that just never has really talked to me on a gut level. Mm-hmm. And so when things catch me on a gut level, I just go, okay, well, whatever else is happening here, mm-hmm. this is talking to me on a gut level. And Good. That's, You're following your heart. that's what I want, you know? That's, that's, that's so important. That's what I want. And yeah. I figured that's what... Yeah. I, because as I, I grew up, I grew up on Long Island, and I didn't grow up in country music. Although my mom listened to a lot of country music, and I didn't know country music and pop. I didn't know there was a difference right. growing up. I, don't know, I was right. set, I was you know a little kid in the seventies, and I, I didn't know the Dukes of Hazard was in the. I just thought it was a funny 
show, you know, and, and I didn't differentiate any of that stuff, right. you know. And it's only today that we're sort of locked into these genres and everything is mm -hmm. defined. And a lot mm -hmm. of that comes from branding, you know. And I think of a brand, I think of a, you know, sticking a cow with yeah. a metal thing on fire. That's, <laughs> that's it. That's it exactly. It hurts. Ow! Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but, you know, in saying that, and Waylon had to reach a point that he had to leave the artist suit temporarily. We had a great man, Neil Reshan, who had sued everybody in New York and won. Mm -hmm. So he knew how to get into the corporate Right. And take a look at it. Right. And That's just treaty did. law right there. That's all that is. That's <laughs> treaty law. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so he, uh, he did that, and so Waylon... It was forced to really learn the business, you know, because yeah. we were at the top of our field and mm -hmm. going bankrupt. So we had to figure out what mm -hmm. to do. Right. And he did, and we had a sterling reputation in business. Mm -hmm. It was an unusual coupling. Right. He was a man with his music. I mean, his music trends, you know, mm -hmm. related mm -hmm. as something real. Yes. And then his business reputation mm -hmm. became sterling. And, um, and, you know, the business part of it is what the artist really doesn't relate that much to. Uh, the, there has to be good people. There's a lot of bad people in it. Yeah. But uh, and the if danger, you find a good one, yeah. great. But well, and the danger as an artist is if you relate too much to the business yes, and to this branding thing, it then is. the music is just, yeah. it's just boring and oh, who cares? I know. Exactly. It's and mechanical. It's mechanical. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. and, the, and the hope is that we don't all just people, the list, you know, younger people don't just, you know, I, I looked at this record kind of as a, like a rescue mission. I thought, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you don't think of Waylon as needing to be rescued. No. I mean, most people don't. And that's a little silly of me. But even after I moved to Nashville and and been I've been making music a long time, and yeah, I've been a, I've been a on my own background with the blues. Mississippi, yeah, I, yeah, I've done New so Orleans. many things, and I, I covered this country. I, yeah. I love it. I love it all, you know. And on some level, it, in the time, that kind of works against you because they're like, "Well, what do we do with you? Where do we put you? Oh, you're know. not this. You're not that." Yeah. And I just thought, well, if I live long <laughs> enough and I do this long enough, Bonnie Raitt told me one time, just stay in the ring. Mm -hmm. Last man standing wins. Mm -hmm. I thought, okay, that's what I'll do. And I just keep doing what I like, mm -hmm. you know. But, um, and I don't think many people think about Waylon needing to be rescued, except once I got here to Nashville and I was looking around and really a lot closer to country music in general, you know, and I have a vast record collection, so I, I, I feel like I, you know, I appreciate it. Across the ages, you know, mm -hmm. last mm -hmm. long, you know, last hundred years of music is all exciting to me, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but when I see, uh, I, I saw it as a, him being represented fairly one dimensionally, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and I thought, I just didn't think. I just wanted to. I don't know. I just felt kind of responsible to say. I think there's a lot more going on here, and. Um, that's great. And uh, but that's, that's kind of why, I, but, but I just really wanted to, but really those songs, they speak for themselves. Mm -hmm. They don't, if, if you can, you know, if you can kind of wrap your, if you're that, you know, if your voice will do that, those songs are going to tell you a, a universal truth. That's true. You know, they stand on their own. That's stories. And, and even Christ dealt in very believable parables, very simple stories, because that's believable. Mm. And well, they are parables. Songs are very Believable, you yes. know, it mm -hmm. just relates to the core, mm -hmm. and that's how he lived, and uh, that's what those songs are. Yeah. So I, and you convey that very. You're very qualified with your history and knowing music and all that, and then just your instincts and your heart. When you stay close to your heart, um, you're going to find the right road. You know, and I just really hope it's heard because Me too. it's really exciting. Thank you. I'm it's so, really I'm, I'm exciting. So glad to hear that. Music. It is exciting. Yeah, it it's is. um it was exciting in the studio yeah. and it remains exciting to me and I was so glad with the band and I just love these songs. And these are party songs in, in the best way. 
I mean, after you've worked, the, the, you know, his folks were um, working in the crops and, and gathering the fruit and, you know, they were of the earth, mm-hmm. very much of the earth mm-hmm. and the dust bowl and all that. Yeah. And after a hard day's work, they'd sit around on the porch in Texas. They were known for that. Mm-hmm. And play music. I mean, music was the way you could feel good after you worked all day and, mm-hmm. you know, with your hands or picking cotton or whatever you're doing. In, in those years, that right. was the, what you did. And there's still people today working oh. the crops. Yeah. Working, I mean, you see, we call them different crops, oh, you know. Yes. I mean, whether they're nurses yes. or yes. they're, you know, Working in grocery stores, yes, whatever, yes, whatever. Yes. Anybody who's got to get up and go to work every single day, yeah. that's that's a kind of and that's know, a kind of sharecropping. Know. You know, that's it's exactly. all sharecropping. Everything we do yeah. now is sharecropping. Yeah. And that's one of the things I loved so much about these songs is, you know, these are old songs. These are songs from these have, they've been around for decades, mm-hmm. and they're um, very rich. They're very rich, and like okay. a parable. Yeah. They don't get old because, yeah. you know, they... And it's, it's celebrating life. Wevan had this thing in it. Yeah, it's joie de vivre. <laughs> he always sold, you know, the up-tempos. Yeah. That's what, you know, when they categorized him, you know, he did ballads incredible. Right. I mean, his ballads Make you were cry. incredible. Yeah, yes, I know. But he was celebrative. And that's oh. what you're doing. when You're just celebrating something good in your life. You yeah. Know, when you know, when you're happy with music. Yes. Happy with music. Yeah, well, and you that's know, what he, that's it's kind frequency. Of he it's a frequency. Yes. It's those, when those yes. sound waves hit you, yes. they stimulate. It's a vibe. It's a vibe. It they is. stimulate you. It is. In a, uh, you know, yeah, they connect. Happy mood. Yes, happy. Yes. You know? it, that's yeah. the word that I've yeah. used so many times with this project. <laughs> Every time I call somebody, I'm like, this makes me so happy. This makes me so happy. <laughs> Isn't that great? It's great, you know, it really and uh, cool. it's really yeah. cool. And uh, so I, I do hope that that's what uh, is transmitted, you know, through these songs. And, right. and, and as happy as it makes me yes. is what I hope. Um, yes, and, you know, this fits in the, one of your first questions to me that I didn't answer completely was about how they outlawed it. Well, Hazel Smith, who was this great country woman who came here, she had loved Bill Monroe, and she came here, kind of following him, I think, and she ended up getting into music, and she ended up being the greatest publicist here, mm-hmm. a great friend of ours. But she was in the office with this little dank office, at Tom Paul's thing, Cat Midnight would sleep there. <laughs> uh, Marie Harp, Har- she married John Hartford later, worked as a receptionist, mm-hmm. and Hazel told all kinds of stories about how it was, but because they were trying to categorize this, and they said, well, it's outside the system. Well, so just the system, you know, and systems are made given what exists, and let's put a name to it, you know, but when you do something that doesn't exist, and it takes time, even with Jack White, it took him, I don't know how many years, to categorize his music as modern rock, you know. So, and, you know, with me, by the way, I was turned down by six companies before Capital took oh. Lisa. I was turned down. Yeah. Oh here, God. I have here. heard the word the no. <laughs> yeah. I should just yeah. I should That's just some days sign. I was like, I'm gonna write no That's right a good here. Sign. Good sign. I have heard no. I thought the same. I I have always thought <laughs> when they're telling you no, yeah. you're doing it right. <laughs> I know yeah. it Do doesn't it feel right. that way. Yeah. And yeah. as long as you can make it, you know, mm-hmm. as long as you can you gotta you just but you have to have this in well, like you said earlier, it's just a devotion mm-hmm. to yes. Music. Uh, and to good humor, mm-hmm. I think those two things. Having fun. Have, uh, it being fun. It yes. has to be fun. That's yes. the other thing about making this record. Yes. It was so much fun. I kept looking around like, I can't believe I'm getting away with it's this. It's a party. I can't believe I'm doing this. Oh, my God, I can't believe I'm doing Isn't this. Isn't that great? And that's how they used to it celebrate. It was so was much singing fun. Singing songs and making music, you know. Yeah. And, um, and that leads us into... The fact that Margot Price, who yes. was kicked outside, yes. you know, for a long time, finally found her place with Jack White and mm-hmm. so forth. And um, I know you were gonna, you were telling me that you want to hear what I'm doing. Well, Margot has produced an album on me, some new songs that I don't know. I'm kind of at this lay low point because mm-hmm. I'm. I think I'm in between what I'm gonna do next. Right. And but she, that's an exciting began, place to yeah, be. Yeah, you know, is. she began. Uh, 
cutting her band is so great. Right. And we did it in a matter of days. She was about to have the baby. And it's just evolved. There were things. The engineer went back to Spain. He was sick. This and that. <laughs> so then we were looking for the right mixer. Right. And Shooter was scheduled through 21. And I wanted Shooter to mix it because he's got this thing with sound. And right. um, <clears throat> knowing what to do right. with a song. Right. <clears throat> so... Not just because he's my son, because when he first started out, he was doing metal. Uh huh. <laughs> he says, it sounds like. Well, you know, he's been on his path and, you know, oh, yes, so know. much music. Well, he wasn't doing exactly metal. He wouldn't say, that's wrong, mother. But anyway, whatever. He mixed and tore it up. And so we're just now in the, in the place of pitching it. Lovely. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm sure it'll be fantastic. It. We'll see what happens. It's, yeah. it's, uh, we'll see what happens. But it was great fun. And that's the whole point. And like every track that I'd be sent, oh gosh, yeah, that sounds amazing, you know. So, you know, everything that goes with it, that touches it, when you follow your yeah. heart, yeah. And you know, really, I'm following Margot's heart. I've never had a woman produce me. Uh -huh. I always had these great producers uh -huh. that were men, right? You know, so I thought, oh, okay, this is different, you know. Yeah. And it was just, yeah. it was neat. It was cool, and she's been great. So that's awesome. Yeah. Well, that's really. Did you yeah. write the songs? Um, most of them. Most of them. All mm -hmm. right. That's awesome. Most That's really them. exciting. I mean, making records is, you know, when people ask you, like, what would you do if you won the lottery? Mm -hmm. I would do exactly what I do. Yes. I would just do it a lot yes. more often. Yes. <laughs> Pay everybody better. <laughs> right. <laughs> I would just do it right. a lot more. Right. You know, I mean, I love what I do, but that's exciting. Well, it's exciting having you. Oh, yeah, thank you. You followed your heart. It has thank led you. you to this great place, and we get to hear Waylon songs from a beautiful female. All he right. would just flirt with you. Boy, All right. He would flirt with you. Well, joie de vivre, <laughs> you know. Yeah, well, and, you know, and um, yeah, no, there's just so many great songs. And I'm, so that's exciting to work with a female producer. I've, yes. I've worked with an amazing woman producer uh, and uh, mix engineer, Trina Shoemaker, was one of my favorites. But for the most part, I had to make a baby girl to get one in the van. Like, I had to <laughs> I had to make one in my body uh -huh. to, like, come up with, what? So many oh, men, you know? It's yeah. just, it's, but, and I love them. I love men. Oh, I, I, do I, I dig I've them. Always... I understand them. I'm comfortable. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. But it's always very exciting when you suddenly you're like, oh, I'm, this is, this is different. This is, this is new energy. Yes, this is, yes. you know, and since yes. I've come to Nashville, I've had so, I've worked with so many women and it, it's such a completely different it is. energy, it you is. know, and one of the nicest things about doing this record about this incredibly archetypal man, you know, American man, archetypal outlaw has been all the women that it has introduced me to. It's been such oh, a wonderful thing. Great. It's been great. <clears throat> it's been great. great. I've gotten to talk yeah. to so many women, and they're all excited. It was well, you all. Know, they're moving into their creative mode, and that's yeah. what's important. And this time you know? of the, you know, this time that coming off this, this yeah. pandemic, yeah. and in a way, it's all the rules are gone out the window. There's yeah. no rules. Right. It's a great. It's the wild, wild west. Mm -hmm. And it, right now, if there's one word that I have heard. One billion times during this period of time, it's you got to be creative. You got to be creative. You got to be creative. Nothing's working. Mm -hmm. Everything's broken. Yeah. We don't know what's coming. Unsure. Yeah. yeah. You got to be creative. Yeah. And what a wonder. I mean, it's terrifying on some yeah. levels, and everybody's lost their income, <laughs> including me and all the live stuff, and, and how much we all miss live music. Mm -hmm. I know. But being forced to step out of the comfort zone mm -hmm. and do something, mm -hmm. it's that's exciting to me. Yeah. That's that space that's like, right. then you're in the life field. You're yeah. in the, you know, you're in the life force. Right. And you are completely in the life force right. and it's exciting yeah. and, it's, and it's fun. If you have the resources that you can get in there and do it. Mm -hmm. yes. um, but it's been great for me because everybody's home off the road. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Not so busy. All right. And um, well, thank you very much for joining us, everybody. I had such an incredible time talking to Miss Jessie Coulter and me with you. And we have had a blast. So um, we'll see you soon, yeah, I guess. Yes. Yeah, you need the album. All right. Okay. Yeah, every she's home, got one too. As Lily used to say, every home needs one of these. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank yeah. you. Oh, you're so welcome. Thank you. Yeah.